It's known as the Land of Oz. Across its every extreme, there are birds of a different color. They're the brightest cast of characters in the Australian story. They routinely get the best of farmers. They try to outwit each other. We actually caught them out playing a little mating game of their own. There is complicated thought going in that, that big head of theirs. Rowdy and resourceful, they're Australian originals. They're parrots in the land of Oz. Forests, a brilliant array of parrots adapted crafty beaks and dexterous toes to crack the rich bounty of seeds and fruit. The tiniest of all, the fig parrot, gorges on fruit bigger than its head. The general rule for the males here is to be as colorful as needs be to attract a mate without becoming a neon lure to predators. The king parrot is brash, while the green feathers of the red cheek parrot blend into the foliage. He relies on his sexy red head and bright beady eyes to get the females. But one of the most amazing birds in the world is the eclectus parrot, because it breaks virtually every rule in the evolutionary rule book. The male is green and the female red. So strikingly different are they that for a long time people thought that the two must be separate species. Millions of years ago, most of Australia's rainforests gradually dried and became open woodlands. Many parrots were able to adapt to the new and tougher conditions. To survive on the desert edge, red-tailed black cockatoos stick to the few tree-lined watercourses. As the sun drops, the birds arrive from all directions. With breeding hollows scarce, most of these cockies are single. The local watering hole is their pickup joint, and the evening quickly turns into a boisterous party. Younger birds flirt by displaying the color banding on their tails and raising their crests. These fancy pop-up crests are what distinguish cockatoos from the other parrots. These opportunistic cockies thrived and spread out as the continent dried. During the last ice age, winds lashed the land and heaped sand into vast dunes. Grasses and shrubs spread across the desert, producing an abundance of seeds. The galahs were quick to take advantage of the new foods. They went just about everywhere, eating almost anything. Today, there's barely a patch of Australia without these extroverted cockies. But the opportunistic galahs were not the only ones to try new foods. The less common Major Mitchell cockatoos have recently acquired a taste for paddy melons.
These inquisitive birds have little trouble working out some fancy footwork to break into the fruit. Their new cuisine arrived as part of an exotic smorgasbord. Wherever they went, they brought a whole range of new opportunities for parrots to exploit. Paddy melons were introduced to feed the camels of the Afghan traders as they traveled the outback supplying the isolated properties. It was a tough life for the early pioneers, and frequent droughts made it hard to make a living. Adding to the farmer's woes, the cockatoos soon worked out that where there was stock, there was stock feed. All this free fast food made life pretty cushy for generations of cockatoos, and their numbers boomed. Man-made water holes helped parrots spread and survive where they couldn't have done before. Ring-neck parrots, budgerigars, pale-headed rosellas all come in to drink in family groups. Mulga parrots can live in waterless areas, but no one in the outback turns down a free drink. Rain rarely falls in the Australian deserts. Droughts can last for over a decade. Water holes turn to mud. Leaving a freshwater crayfish exposed and an easy target. Native grasses start to seed. The scene is set for the arrival of the stars of the Australian desert. Budgerigars. We keep them in cages, but in the wild, budgies roam the vast outback. When it rains, flocks swoop in from everywhere. No one knows how they navigate. Perhaps they home in on the low-frequency sounds of thunderstorms thousands of miles away. Their aim is to breed furiously while the conditions are right. Along the gorges of the central ranges, every tree hollow is alive with the flutterings of courtship. The riverbank is perfect for a dinner date. In the budgie mating game, you need to be camouflaged while feeding on the ground, but still flashy enough to impress a potential mate. And the way budgies see each other's feathers is different than the way we see them. We see in red, green, and blue, but budgies have a fourth cell in their eye that enables them to see ultraviolet. When UV rays hit some parts of the budgie's plumage, they give off a reflective glow. It's a fair bet the female will choose the brightest, sexiest male, 